In this video, I'm going to share with you guys exactly how to master sales, exactly how I've sold nearly a million dollars over the last eight months and the journey and the process and exactly what you can expect in your journey as well as you become a sales master. So buckle up. This is going to be a, a banger. So make sure you grab your popcorn, put your phone away, tie your kids up outside or whatever you do with kids and get ready because this one's going to be a banger. So let's get straight into it. If you don't already know me, my name is Jeremy Pogue and I help coaches, consultants build seven figure online companies. So that said, let's get straight into it. So what it looks like is there's different stages of mastery, right? If you've never sold anything before and you're a total beginner in sales, the first step is to learn the script, right? You got to have some sort of script. some sort of script and learn the basics, right? Learn, kind of figure out how it works, what goes on with that. The next is memorizing the script, right? So actually, no, like not having to rely on the script anymore. So you've learned the fundamentals and now you've practiced it and it's become kind of muscle memory to you, right? <clears throat> the next stage from there is not really needing like to follow the script word for word. And because it's memorized, then you can kind of just know what milestones to check, what to look for as well. So we'll, we'll call this like milestones, right? And you kind of like, you, you know what bases to hit. And if we were to like draw out like the timeline of a sales call, it's kind of like you set the frame and then like learn about the current situation, desired situation. Why can't they get there on their own? Present the offer and then answer any questions. Talk about the price and then like objections and then close in and then you make money, right? So you kind of understand all of these little checkpoints, exactly what you need to do at each stage in order to progress the sales call to the next level, right? So once you understand that and you no longer have to rely on a script, then the next one is presenting your offer with like drop dead cold hard conviction so let's say like conviction slash offer there's absolutely zero hesitation when you tell them that you can help them and what you're doing with that here's a here's a key nugget for you guys when you're presenting your offer when you're telling somebody that you can help them out what you really need to do is it's like at that point it's not so much about like what you say but how you say it it's a transfer of energy. It's a transfer of conviction, of confidence that this will work for them through how you say what you say, if that makes sense. So that conviction in your offer and the way that you present that needs to be clear and it needs to be coming from a place of like, I will literally take this to the grave with me then I can help you out. You're the perfect fit and there's no reason this won't work out. Right, that's really like the, the energy, the tonality that you need to deliver when telling them that you can help them out. And that kind of leads us into the next one, which is like really just dialing in on, on tonality, sharpening that up, right? Knowing how to ask certain questions, how to respond to questions, how to really set the frame, how to like really just lead the call essentially, right? Tonality is extremely important. And then from there as well, kind of the last part here is just like, objection handling slash closing, right? And then that leads pretty much to the sale. So what I see a lot of people do, like especially over the last couple of weeks, a lot of our clients have come to me, they've got this down, we've got a hell of a good script, it's all over like 25 mil at this point. And they have the, uh, like they, they memorize it, they know what questions to ask, they know what milestones they need to hit, right? They're checking all the boxes here, moving along the process very sequentially, very linearly, linearly. Um, and then the conviction and the offer is it's kind of like, this is the part where a lot of people get hung up on. So down here, this is very like, it's very like logical, you know, it's like, am I asking these questions? Am I checking these boxes? Yes or no? It's very like, very yes or no, you know? It's like, 
logical. Up here, it's more like, maybe not logical, but let's say like tangible. You can clearly measure it. Up here, this is very intangible. It's hard to, to measure like the conviction, how well you present, present the offer. It's hard to measure like your tonality and like rate that. And it's hard to measure like, well, I, I guess the measurement for objection handling and closing is like, did you make the sale or not? But nonetheless, um, this is where a lot of people get hung up on. They nail the foundations and then there's this imaginary line right here that kind of prevents a lot of people from moving forward. But what they don't understand and, and they let that kind of get to them. They let that beat them down. But what they don't understand is like, it's, they're literally on the perfect track. They're on the perfect trajectory to mastering sales, right? And there's gonna be a lot of other like steps here that I didn't cover. There's a lot, a lot of nuances in between, but these are kind of a lot of like some of the main ones. Uh, but just for like simplicity's sake here, like where they get hung up is like, yeah, I'm saying, I'm asking all the questions, I'm saying all these things, but they're not paying me money. I was like, yeah, because you haven't nailed th these down. You're still stumbling when you say your offer, you're stuttering, you're scrambling, you're on your heels, right? You're not confident, there's no conviction. Up here, right, same kind of thing with your tonality. It's like very monotone and there's no energy behind it. There's no confidence, there's no assurance that you can help them and then up here, they give you one objection after you say the price, and then all of a sudden, like, if they don't say yes in the first time, then you just, like give up and get defeated, right? Well, of course, as with any new skill, like you're probably you're not going to be good at it when you first start. It's going to look like I'll do this where you guys can see it. Um, it's going to look a lot like any skill. It's like a, the exponential growth curve, right? At first, you're, you're going to suck. Stage one is you're gonna do a lot of stuff and you're not gonna be good at it. Then over here, you're gonna get some traction. And then finally up here, stage three, this is where things really start to pick off, pick up, right? You've mastered the, the basics, you've mastered the like fundamentals, the foundations. St stage two is kind of like around here and then stage three is like closing. So it's like, they've got this nailed down, right? They've got that nailed and they're working Kind of like working on this, right? They've maybe made a few sales, but then now like, okay, like how do I increase the closing rate? How do I start closing like 30 to 40% consistently, right? And to with that, it's like <clears throat> double down on your conviction and your offer and the clarity on how you say it as well. Like there's absolutely no hesitation. You're not stuttering because you know exactly what to say. It's like Alex Ramosi says like, when you're in the red zone, towards the end of the call, that's not the time where you need to be scrambling, thinking about what to say, right? You need to have that nailed down and tonality and then objection handling and closing, right? These are new, these are skills in of themselves. So you're gonna probably gonna suck at them when you first start out. I know I did, I was over 30 on my first 30 sales calls and I'm not a natural born salesman, but I learned it. I'm gonna teach you guys exactly how to do that in a minute here. So. That's kind of exactly what to expect in terms of like expectations and how to improve. It's like, it, like if you're stuck here, then just like go to the next stage, work on this, practice that, get coaching, buy a book, buy a course, watch YouTube videos, like double down on that, right? And that's gonna help you move up this, this line and get close to your goals, right? So that said, Here's, there, there's kind of lear, the learning curve and what to expect. Now here's how to speed that learning curve up. So this is the secret sauce. And if you stay to, to this point, you will not be disappointed because this is, I'm gonna show you exactly what I did, what worked for me when I first started selling. Because like, like I said, I sucked, I was not good. But here's how I got very damn good. And as of right now, my best day is $41,000 cash collected in a single day. So. Here's how I did it. This is what your day should look like. Let's say, here's your average day, right? There's your calendar. Let's say you're working like, I don't know, let's say 10 hours. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So your first like hour should be like rewatch, like rewatch your one sales calls. Sales calls that you close. 
right? Th what this will do is it will give you so much like confidence. It's like basically like positive reinforcement, right? Positive reinforcement is like, you know what? I have clothes. I can close. I know what I'm doing here, right? Rewatch your calls. Rewatch those sales calls. And that will set you up in such a great mental state before heading into like a full day of calls. You know, if you got like five, six, seven, eight, nine calls, whatever. And then at the end of the day, your last like hour or two, after you don't have any calls left, like rewatch the calls that day that did not go so well, right? Rewatch those negative calls that didn't close and pick them apart. Okay, why didn't it? Was it the way, and, and here's kind of what I look for when reviewing some of our clients' uh, sales calls. It's like the initial like kind of rapport slash like setting the frame part, right? Like, did you set the frame? Did you hold the frame? How well did you sell? What, was it very awkward? Were you talk, like, talking about random shit for too long? And then the next one's kind of like, did you really dig into their pain? Right? Do they have a real problem? Were you able to extract that? And then their desire. Like, why do they actually want this thing? Why do they want to improve? Get them to tell you. And then, like, the offer. Was there conviction? Was there hesitation? Was there a lack of conviction? And then, like, when they had questions or objections, how did you handle that? And then, finally, like, closing. Right? So when you're reviewing your own sales calls, like look for these markers and kind of judge yourself. Would I buy from it? And if you do this, watch your good sales calls at the start of the day, rewatch your bad ones with, with this criteria to figure out like why they didn't close and do continue to do sales training every single day as well. Like I'd say, let me redo this, do this here. And then at, at the end, like rewatch training. That's supposed to say rewatch. There's a bit of a lag with my mouse here. I'm trying to write it fast, but with the screen recording software, it's kind of glitching out a little bit. Um, so, I'll leave you with this. There's a Bruce Lee quote that says, I don't fear the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks. I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. And that's exactly what we are shooting for here. So for the first six months when I was selling, I was literally watching like the same sales training day in, day out. It's like a one to two hour long video or there's a series of them, there's a few of them. I just kind of cycle through them every single day as well as the call recordings because every single time I go through it, I pick up, pick up some, oh shit, why didn't I say that? Or why did I totally forget to say that? Or man, if I used that thing, if I said it this way instead of what I said, I probably could have closed them, right? So that helped me. And like every single time I went through it, like I picked up something new. It's kind of like when you read a book, you probably only like remember like three main things from it. Or like you, you retain like five or ten percent of it, probably like five. And it's the exact same with this. Just because you've gone through sales training before does not mean you're you're good, right? Watch that thing every single day for the next six months, and it'll be hard for you not to make money. I can guarantee you that. And if you're sitting there like, oh well, that sounds like a lot of work. Yeah, well, if you want the easy route, go get a job. But that's not what we're here for, and that's not what you guys that watch this channel want either, right? We're trying to become absolute savages when it comes to sales and business building so we can help more people out and, and really make a big impact and change the lives. So sales is kind of the first part of it. And the way I see it is like we're doing them a disservice if we don't sign them up. By not doing this, by not like putting in the work here, by rewatching your calls, rewatching your sales training, you're you're hurting a lot of people because you're not able to help them. You're not able to help them make a decision and start working with you. So that way you can actually help impact them and change their life. So that's kind of the way I look at it. It's like, 
what do you want and what are you willing to do to get it? So that's it, guys. Really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm really trying to grow the channel as well. So I hope this was a valuable video for you. If you thought it was, give me a like. Really appreciate it. Smash the like button and uh, share this with a friend too. If you, thought, if you thought this was helpful, if you know somebody that's kind of like going through sales and kind of struggling, send this over to them because I think it'll really help them and I hope it will as well. Um, and almost at a thousand followers on Instagram, we're like 20 followers away or something like that. Um, so if you don't already follow me over on IG, then if you want to follow the journey a little bit closer, I, I share a lot of stuff on there, especially on the stories, um, follow me, Jeremy underscore Bode. And other than that, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.